Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to set up a really simple project with Gulp so you can use it to compile your SAS and run browser sync. Now I'm going to assume that you have Node installed, but if you don't, head over to this website, go to the downloads, find the one that's right for your computer, and get it installed. So we're going to be working with the terminal. Just to begin with, then don't be too worried if you if you haven't used this much before. But um, firstly, we're going to get into the folder that you usually store your projects in. For me, that's sites, and we're going to make a directory to use to uh, store our project. So I'm going to call it gulp example. Um, so then we're going to go into that into that folder and we're going to install a couple of things globally firstly we're going to install gulp and at the same time actually we're going to install browser sync and we flag it with dash g so that it knows that it's global and then just press enter I'm not going to do it because I've already done it uh, you may need to use sudo on this and I'm going to go on assuming that you've all done that. So now we're going to initialize our project using npm. And we'll see what that does in a minute. So we confirm the name, the version, description. We're going to change the entry point. We're going to go with index.html. And just go through everything else. You can change this later if you need to, so it's all right. What all that's done, just open this up in my text editor. Here we go. So all this has done is created a package.json file with all the information about our project here. This will show us all of our dependencies as we add them. So now we're going to install some of them. So let's start with Gulp. And with this, we're going to flag it as well, but we're going to flag it so that it'll save it to our development environment. So it's this flag saves it to our project, so it'll add it to our package.json file. And this says we just need it for development. So it's something that's not going to be involved in the production version of the website, but it's something that we need for development. And that's what that tells it. So actually we're going to do all of them at once again because it may take a while depending on your computer so we'll just do it all in one go browser sync and we're going to also need gulp's sas compiler which is gulp sas there you go and press enter Right, so now that those have all installed, we can see them here. They're listed as our development dependencies, browser sync gulp and gulp sass. So that's great. So we have them. Now we can get rid of the terminal for now. And we're going to start working with the code. So firstly, let's just create an index.html file. So I've just got some basic HTML a head and a body and an H1 and I've also got a link to a style sheet uh, in a CSS folder and we don't you don't have to worry about that right now our SAS compiler will actually create this for us so let's let's start working with gulp first thing we've got to do is create a gulp file which is the file that tells gulp what tasks it has to run to start off the gulp file, we're going to require the, the modules that we installed, and we define them as variables. So for gulp, we require gulp, sass, gulp sass, browser sync, browser sync. And browser sync, we have to create an instance of it. So don't worry about that, just make sure you put it in. Firstly, we're going to set up our styles task which will compile our SAS for us and output it to a CSS file. 
Now I've already written it, I'm just going to paste it in here and show you what it, what it does. So you call gulp with the task method. It first takes the name of the task that you're creating and then a function. And the function is where the all the magic happens. So first you tell gulp the source file for the the that will go into the uh, compiler and then gulp uses pipes to send things through methods so so here it's piping the scss file into the sas module which we have defined up here and then it pipes it through to a destination folder which is from the current directory css so and then this is basically telling browser sync to reload we don't worry about that now now let's create an scss folder we will have to do that i'm going to create a main .scss file but we're not actually going to put any any sass in here i'm going to create one called base and i'm going to put in and I'm just going to style the H1, just going to give it a border, just to show what this does. And if we look, we see that it's not actually calling that file, and really we should should rename that. Didn't mean to call it that. Just going to put an underscore in front of that, which indicates that it's a partial file. Now, now in the main.scss file, we can import that partial file by using the at import function and just using the name of it there and that's all we need to do to bring that file in so now we're going to bring in browser sync and we're going to do that in another gulp task that I'm just going to paste in here this is a bit more complicated than the other one but it'll make sense so it's another gulp task we've called it serve and that's just a convention that's just because it's basically creating a server from our base directory uh, with browser sync. So we're initializing browser sync here and we're telling it what we want it to, or where we want it to serve from. And then we're using gulp's watch method to watch our SCSS directory. And basically it watches for any changes to the files specified here in the first argument. So here it's watching every SCSS file in the SCSS directory, and then it's running the styles task every time something changes, which is great. And we see here what we did before, because it's piping to browser sync, whenever this runs, browser sync reloads. So every time you make a change to your SCSS, Browser Sync will reload all your browsers, which is great. Now here we've got another watch method running on our HTML files, and that's every HTML file in every folder from the root folder. And then we're just specifying that on a change in the files, Browser Sync reloads. And that's our basic Browser Sync serve function set up. So, there's not really much left to do other than something that's more convention than anything, but it's good to have. We're going to set up a default gulp task. And I'm just going to type this out. Gulp task. And we're going to call it default. And we won't actually call default when we use it. This is just the task that runs when you just call gulp. So what we're going to do is, in, we, is include the tasks that we've created, but in an order that makes sense. So we don't want to serve up the directory before we've compiled our styles, because otherwise we won't have a CSS file or we'll have a, a out of date, potentially, CSS file. So we want to make sure that we run this first. So what we're going to do is add an array and in the array, we're going to add our tasks. So first, we have styles. 
and then we have serve. So this will compile our SAS and then run browser sync. So we've basically got our project set up here. So I'm going to bring the terminal back over. Now we're still in our in our project directory. So we're just going to run gulp and just see what happens. Oops. There we go. Let's open it up off screen. But we have it. We have our browser sync running in the browser. Let's just check this. Let's let's change this border color to yellow and save and immediately it's changed. So that's it. That's the basics of a Gulp project using SAS and Browser Sync. I'm going to do a few more videos on expanding this into a more fleshed out complex project with multiple partial CSS files, SCSS files and more HTML and we're going to maybe include a templating language later on. But Gulp is a really powerful tool and I really recommend getting used to it and learning how to use it. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.